Hello, my name is Clara and you are watching episode 10 of Makeup of Fian podcast. Hello again and welcome to the first episode of 2022. It's been a while since I recorded and that's mainly because I wanted to finish some of my whips to, before I record another episode and I actually managed to finish four of them, which is a lot, I think. Uh, given um, my uh, knitting time and yeah, what I wanted to tell you. So for uh, for uh, FO some whips, I also went through my whips of the last year and decided what I want to keep knitting on and uh, what not. And I bought some yarn. I'll be introducing a local, like almost local, hand dyed natural yarn. And yeah, let's start. The first um, FO of this year was, or is, this Yak Beanie. Uh, I knitted this for my husband. Uh, I thought about it a lot. The yarn is 100% organic yak wool from the Mongolian, Czech, Czech Mongolian <laughs> company uh, News Concept. Uh, the yarn name is Sadlak. And this is just a natural grey, it's undyed yarn. And is as the brim is double folded, the first fold is stitched, and then you just fold it once more, so you have the triple layer around your ears, and uh, yeah, that's how it looks. And my husband really loves the, the hat to be on the beanie, which I'm super happy about because single malt sweater, he doesn't wear it. It has in the end, it has the recommended 10 centimeters of positive ease, but it's still too, like, too tight for my husband. So I learned the hard way that I have to knit garments for him with at least 20 centimeters of positive ease, because he wants to wear baggy things. Now, like, he used to wear like, like, really fitted garments, and since the COVID pandemic and his home office, it's been almost two years since he worked in his office. It's been two years. Uh, he's he's been he's been at home for two years now, and he wears baggy things. But he loves the hat. He loves the yarn. It it blooms beautiful after washing. And actually, the the top of the hat is washed twice, because when I started knitting it, I just worked like seven rows and I washed it to see how it blooms, it blooms beautifully and this top is even softer than the rest of it so it keeps uh, softening with washing. It's good to know. And he loves the yarn and the colour and he asked me to knit him a cowl or collar so I decided uh, because the gauge is 20 stitches per 10 centimeters, which is quite good for fingering weight yarn and uh, this gauge also it's, it's, a, it's a gauge for the Carl Johan uh, color which is designed by um, Knitting for Olive so I'm going to buy that design, that pattern and knit him the, uh, the color with the same yarn I don't know when, maybe for the next winter but I promise that to him okay, the next thing is this one, I talked about it a lot as well. Uh, you know, I had to re knit this um, uh, neck warmer because it was like, too loose and it didn't really uh, has its function as um, neck warmer. So I just did the same changes uh, as for my mother's neck warmer. But uh, if you remember, I told you know, there's a short row shaping right here. And uh, I, the, my, the version for my mother, I knitted it uh, like back and forth with the same needle size and it created kind of lines here because my pearls were looser than my knit stitches. And this time I went down a needle size, the left needle. I changed the, the size of the left needle. And I think I kind of prevent the lines from occurring because you don't really see any lines now, I think. 
and uh, because I didn't have enough mohair, uh, like two strands of mohair, so I made this uh, brim shorter, but like three rows shorter than it's supposed to be. I have three rows shorter, it's not a big deal. So I wear it every day, I love it, it's super warm. Uh, the I can just mention the my hair is everywhere. I can mention the yarn, it's uh, Alpaca Free by Isaiah. Isaiah? I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation is. Isaiah? I heard Isaiah, maybe that's the correct one. And uh, Fukona Tivia. Yeah, so this is really, really, I don't know what else I should tell you. But I have my notes here actually, so I can check that here. Uh, where is it? Oh, <laughs> yeah, and even the, the neck it's up, it's a little bit shorter, like by four rows. And I did it because I was afraid I wouldn't have enough more hair. Um, and it was a good decision because you know I had to knit the brim shoulder anyway. So that's it. And because the first version was knit just with one strand of mohair, and yeah, it wasn't good enough. So that's the second, second uh, finished object. Third one I finished yesterday. And it's still a bit damn because yeah I watched it and I've locked it. But it's the Pelto color and it is beautiful. Just look at that kind of like hay field pattern. It's so nice. It's kinda a little blown out. It's a really bright day today. But I probably yeah. Like right here. It's the, yeah, it's how it looks like in uh, real life. And I keep looking there because I can see myself there, <laughs> you know. And uh, what can I tell you about this? Uh, the back looks like that. It's a half brioche stitch. And it's, it's super, it's so nice. It's like free, it's a 3D effect, which I really love. And uh, the neck is actually you need it's like a two by one uh, ribbing, and you need it like two centimeters like in one pattern, and then you reverse the pattern. So in order to look the neck would look the same after you fold it. And I haven't tried on it because uh, it's still damp and I, it's been like drying since uh, yesterday. But the, the neck itself seems a little bit too white. When I, I can actually compare it with this one. Oh, but no, it seems like, you know. Is the same the other way. Compare it like that. You can't see the, the red one much there, so it's actually uh, narrower. Okay, so it should be fine. <laughs> and the thing is, I have a uh, few like objections maybe to uh, regarding the pattern. And uh, actually, <laughs> yeah, it's the thing. Um, I picked up fewer stitches here at the shoulder uh, because I, I just I couldn't, I wasn't able to pick uh, that many stitches as the pattern calls for. So the neck should be wider a little bit, but I don't mind because I don't know. I want it to be really, really snug. So that's just my personal thing. But to the pattern, I was knitting uh, the back and the pattern says that you just have to knit a certain amount of rows or until it measures blah blah blah. 
And then you have to repeat two type of rows, like the uh, wrong side and the right side. So the second row is the right side and it tells you to, to knit those two rows again and again until it measures blah blah blah. So you would say, okay, I have to end uh, with the right side row. But actually, you have then you have instruction for this brim and you have to start with the right side row so that means you have to end the brioche on the wrong side so I was, I was kind of confused because I started with this brim and I was like okay but I was like calculating it and I'm going to bind off on the wrong side that's weird so that's why I looked back and I was like okay so I should repeat those rows but not the, the last second row, like the, the right side row. So that was kind of confusing, at least for me, maybe I'm just stupid, I don't know. And the second thing is that I finished the front and back and I was like, okay, I have to pick up the stitches for the, for the neck. And the pattern says that I have to pick them and go to the right shoulder. It's like, how can I go to the right shoulder when the direction of knitting is to the left? Okay, so I actually wrote to a fellow knitter, uh, Anna, she's also a Czech knitter, I, and, and she did uh, knit this color as well. And I asked her, how did you do that? Like, how can you pick up such as like, going to the right shoulder? So it would either be, it, he would look at it and we would pick them with the wrong side facing, which is like, nonsense. And then she told me that the uh, designer actually explained that that she meant it like go to the right shoulder as if you were looking at the color so the right shoulder is actually the left when you are wearing it but i, I just found it so confusing like I, I i don't know so that's it i think that the pattern has like these two things i really didn't like or was confused about so let's say because it's always like pick up stitches okay but why would i pick them and like look i don't know i just i i can't comprehend it a little bit but never mind the color is ready uh the yarn is bio balance by uh bc garn uh, it's a danish company i believe uh, I hold it double. I had a double, and uh, the colorway is I think it's number six mousse. So, again, that's how it looks. Uh, yeah, that's it. And I didn't, the original pattern calls for a like, finger and weight yarn and mohair. I didn't want to knit it with mohair because it would be too warm. I already have this mohair, like warmer. And I have this like a vision I could wear this in autumn and um, in spring, so it would be nice, comfortable, warm, but not too warm, you know, too warm enough for spring and autumn. And the Bio Balance is actually a blend, a wool cotton blend, it's 50 50 uh, percent. Uh, so. And it's really nice. And uh, I have quite at least like one and a half skein left, I bought too much. So I was thinking about um, combining this yarn with the rest of the yuck yarn. And I also have the, wait for it. Ooh. Yeah, I have these Bish, bush, bushy, bush, you know, this French company I can't pronounce, and I want to combine it together with this. And we'll see. Okay. So, this is the third thing, and the fourth one is this blower stripe blower for my son. Uh, I'm super happy about it. It's so nice. Maybe you remember the Hugo season socks I knitted. And they turned out to be too big because I didn't gauge watch. 
and uh, it was a bad idea not to do that. So I ripped uh, the one sock and you can see this, this caramel stripe, that's the sock. I didn't wash the yarn but it blocked out quite beautifully I think. You can see that. And uh, so and because I actually I bought a lot of this yarn. It's a uh, perfect by Sadiskar. It's a DK weight nylon sock yarn and I didn't want to knit socks with it anymore because I want to knit socks with like non nylon non super wash yarn. But I was like, okay, I want to get rid of this yarn and it's super wash and it has nylon in it. So it's super strong and quite easily washable. It's perfect for children's garments. And I had like children's sweater amount of it. So that's it. And I, actually, I got still some left so I can knit one pair of socks with them. Socks with them. So that's what I'm going to do with the rest. But yeah, that's it. Uh, the stripes are totally improvised. I kind of wanted the upper part to have wider stripes and to be kind of darker and the lower part to have narrower stripes and to be lighter, if that, if that makes any sense. So I, I think I actually... Yeah, but I managed to do that. And I didn't have enough of this uh, grey yarn left, so I didn't repeat this pattern on the sleeves. I just knit them with the beige color and I think it actually looks good. It wouldn't be as nice if the the button pattern would be repeated here. Uh, that's maybe just uh, no, my, my conclusion, <laughs> my opinion. Um, uh, I followed a pattern for this sweater and actually one of you asked me if I can recommend some children's knitwear with wear, which can be easily put on and off and this is it. I follow the Harald's jumper pattern by Petit's knit and this is the first I ever knitted. It's super ugly now but this is how it looks like, the original version of Harald's jumper. It has this uh, ripped section here and uh, so I follow the same pattern. I go up a side because my son is older now and I omitted the rib section and just uh, did the stripes. Uh, I also, um, what I changed, there are several types of increases in the pattern and I changed all the increases to make one left in type of increase because, you know, there are no pearls, so it was easy. And the, the, the neck or the collar is folded and knitted together and after you fold it and it together uh, ready? you should start with an increase row right increase row right away but I find it too fiddly because you know when you knit them together it's kind of bulky and you can't really see the the strand between those stitches you can't see the strand between them really well. So I just added one row, which I only knit, and then I increased on the second row. So Inna has woken up uh, and she's laying right here on, on, the, on the floor. <laughs> Not directly on the floor, on a play mat. And um, so. Maybe uh, you remember I talked about I really wanted to knit something with stripes, so I kind of did that, not for myself, but for my son. And it was my first stripes knitting, let's say, and I really tried to make the joints in kind of invisible, but still you can see it's where they are. It's not that bad, I think. It could be worse. <laughs> And no one will actually see this it's on the side. Uh, so that's the one thing I wanted to mention. Yeah. <laughs> and now you can actually see what I'm wearing. Uh, it's um pattern by Petit Knit, it's Angus Cardigan, and I haven't been wearing it since I 
finished it a lot because um, there were different buttons here. Kind of fancy ones uh, and I didn't really like them. I, they are gorgeous but it doesn't really feel like me. And so I changed them. Uh, I bought these dark wooden ones. Is it visible? Yeah. Maybe like... Yeah, you can see that. And since then, since I changed them, I wear it every day. All the sounds, that's Ina. <laughs> She's farting. Right? So it's... Uh, it's in it uh, with Bernila by Phil Colana and it has spilled a lot. Can you see that? Maybe like... Maybe you can like here. Um, it's like two weeks of wearing it. I, I, yeah, it's been two weeks and it's spilled a lot. I think I have to find some or buy some a pill remover. Yeah. And I don't want to talk about this um, more because I plan to do a petite needs episode because I went through my wigs. And my current wave I'm working on is the vertical stripe sweater, which is also a pattern by Petite Knit. So after I finish this, I want to do a bit in this episode because I actually did this cardigan and also the retro slipover last year before I started podcasting. And I want to give you my opinion on that as well. So, this is what I have. The body is finished and now I'm working on the back section. Just knit forth and back. You can see the little bit here. I have nothing much to show you. Uh, the yarn is uh, Lama Oud by Gamma Rose. Gamma Rose. I'm not sure how to pronounce again this uh, brand. And it's super gorgeous, rustic yarn. So this is the whip I'm knitting on like right now. Or I'm, uh, I started with it yesterday. So that I want to finish um, for sure. One thing I cast this on in September I think and I choose the small size mm, and uh, uh, I thought about, I think about it yesterday and I should have um, just knitted the extra small because I think it would have enough positive ease even with the extra small size and it's going to be like, baggy a lot but never mind so actually, so the circumference would be for the small size, but I knitted the length for the extra small. I'm a short person, so it would be long. Yeah. Even the extra small will be quite long, I think. So that's it. The so it's one whip. Uh, the other one is the sweater sweater for my son again. It's the color work uh, yeah. kind of sweater. I can show it to you actually. Where is it? It's not here. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so this is this sweater. Blah. This is the sweater. I, you know, the fun part is over. So <laughs> I, I'm not so motivated to finish it. It's just plain stuck in it from the uh, from here. But yeah, I, I can I can finish it. So the this is the next whip. So I want to. I'm probably working on this. Like it's just plain stuck in it. It's great for you no know, TV watching in the evening. And um, yeah, and the vertical stripes with her as well, actually, just you know, four by four rip. And I did tell you, I want my, my nearest castle is going to be the brochure, and it was. I did cast it on on the 1st of January, and <laughs> I finished this, and I'm going to rip it back because. We can see. Ah! 
Oh my god. And you look at this side. I know that like uh Jan Owers. And can you see that? Oh this way. Yeah, this way. And they are too big. On the right side they are really nice. So I just have to or can you see it like that? Maybe? Uh, no. I just have to be careful on the wrong side. I really tighten the first stitch so the slip over uh, won't be that big. Uh, so this is just yeah, this is nothing. <laughs> but I did cast it on. And um, so that's it. I'm going to start over. Uh, it's kind of simple pattern and it's like my second time I think or with chart so it's something new for me and so that's this way mm. what else uh, okay and there's one whip I don't want to continue the thing on and uh, here it is. I've never showed it to you because I started it somewhere, somewhere, so sometime, oh, sometime in July, and then I wasn't able to mm, knitting it because it's a little, little floppy and my pattern really was like too itchy or too sensitive to it. But that's what I have. <laughs> Oh, I have sleeves, I have the upper part. So the story behind this is I had this color left, like one and a half ball. I was like, okay, I can knit this upper part with this color and then buy a contrasting color. This is light edge header, no, edge header, and this is oatmeal. The thing is, I don't like the color combination. I just, I don't like it. I Oh, it might be good it's not so it um the sleeves are finished they're already ready to go but i don't want to um continue the next thing is there's this like stocky net um, color and i don't like it i just it this type of color i don't like i found out Another thing is, it's kind of boxy and I don't think it looks that good on me. And yeah, so that's basically it. I'm going to rip it out and because I have a lot of this yarn and also this yarn left, I'm going to knit socks with it because uh, about a month ago I bought um, a sock pattern collection by Ozetta Litve. <coughs> And she knits or she designed the patterns for like floppy. So I'm going to have a floppy socks. Yeah, so that's it. Um, I don't. The pattern is great. Don't. I don't have anything against the pattern or the design. I love the design, but it just doesn't fit me or doesn't look good on me. And I think it would be. It's no point in knitting something I will be wearing. And the thing is, uh, again, I w didn't have enough yarn for this like, uh, herringbone stitch panel. So I asked if someone has the some rest of it so I can finish it. And one lady said, yes, I can send it to you. And when, what I received was on the Lopi in Ash Heather, but Plot Lopi in Light Ash Heather. This plate, actually, which... So that's how I actually get this plate because I wanted to finish this Springness feather. Oh, it's Springness feather by, I didn't say it, Springness by Fiber Tails. So I have this little loopy, I can do something with it. A uh, plot loopy. Not a plot loopy. Uh, so that's it. That's uh, the one whip I'm going to continue knitting on. Uh, <laughs> okay, and acquisitions. 
I told you I want to knit a feather cardigan and for that I needed to buy more of the Utrecidia bow, which I did, so um, it's already in my stash. It's this beautiful color, number 05. Uh, so I have this, I can start with that. And I also purchased this beauty. And it's um, hand dyed local yarn. Almost local. It's uh, from Slovakia. It's so beautiful. I, I love the, the the tag on it. It has a yarn name, the brand name. It's Mokosha. Like this Mokosha. And uh, okay, so <laughs> it's uh, again. I can show it to you. The name is uh, Mokosha. Yeah, and uh, it's really nice because okay, you get the I can read to you. Mokosha is like an ancient Slavic goddess, and she was a goddess of harvest, sheep, spinning, and faith. So that's why they are called Mokosha, and this is all sourced in Slovakia and hand dyed in Slovakia. It's 100% uh, Slovak Suffolk. So it's like not Slavic sheep breed, but the sheep are from Slovakia. And it's, uh, it's worsted weight. And no, I, it's actually I'm confused because uh, this is, it's a mix between uh, Suffolk and Valaška and Valaška is a Czech sheep breed and so I want to ask if I can tell you what sheep breeds are, do we have here. But on their website I think it's like 5% Valaška and the rest is the Suffolk. Uh, okay, and this um, this color is called uh, Platno, which means canvas. Hmm? Is that and so, one sheep breed we have is called Valaška. It's from the region Valašsko. My mother actually comes from that region, and that region is at the border with Slovakia. And this, uh, the wool or the of this sheep is or the fleece is uh, it's very long staples. It's really uh, like durable. They say it's perfect for socks, better than nylon even. So that's one breed we have, and Mokosha actually sells uh, the Valaška fleece, so you can spin it. Um, well, it reminds me, uh, my mother gave me like a uh, drop spindle and some fleece for Christmas. But I tried it for one hour and it was a catastrophe. <laughs> I, I felt so stupid and I actually haven't found time to, you know, uh, really concentrate it on concentrate on it since then. So because of the children and everything. So I, I really want it's a fiber in my mouth. Uh, no. Uh, okay, it's my own hair. Um. So so that's it. And the yarn name is called Ona. Uh, Ona means she. Uh, like her she in Slovak and Czech as well and other Slavic languages. Uh, they, uh, by the end of the month they are going to introduce more uh, bases, not just this one, so I'm really looking forward to that. It feels really rustic. It's uh, kind of rough, uh, but beautiful. I wonder how it will soften after washing. We'll see. So that's the acquisition part. What else? Okay, and the other chick sheep breed is called Shumovka because Shumova is it's mountains and also region in Czech Republic. But uh, I don't think I, I have found information about the fleece or whether it's used for like, making wool and yarn. 
But yeah, we have two breeds, Valaška and Šumavka, because of the Valašsko region and Šumava region. Okay, so that's it. Uh, and I bought it. Hey, what I'm going to do with it? I uh, didn't um, make a swatch. No, I haven't made a swatch yet. But I want to knit. I want to knit uh, some design from uh, B Mandarins. It's Melody Hoffman. Melody Hoffman, yeah. So I love her like, textures and floral patterns. And it should be. Because they say this should give you like 17 stitches per 10 centimeters, which is something like that low P. And she designs with the low P a lot. So. Melody Hoffman! Inuska, ty se nudíš, že? Ty se nudíš. OK, and I also bought this lovely type of, it's like gauge swatch ruler. You can, you can see that? You can just, it's uh, from the Vonya Nesestri uh, yarn shop. Can you see that? Uh, Focus on my head. I just you have like ten by ten centimeters, and you can measure your swatch. And because of the pelto color, I had to buy two point five millimeters silk circular needles, and these are by Knit Pro. Really basic, really kind of cheap. And if you're uh, if you've been following me for a longer time, you know I don't like metal needles. But these are super comfortable to knit with. So I was kind of surprised. Pleasantly surprised. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do something like this with children. Okay. Uh, other question was, uh, what's my favorite tool for knitting? So. That's not in, that's not like plenty of tools, I think, but it would be interchangeable wooden needles uh, between like 3.5 to 4.5 millimeters. It's like my favorite size. <laughs> so that's the one question. A few of you ask for my gingerbread cookie recipe and uh, if and you look in the description box below, you will find it there. So <laughs> I'm not, uh, it's not the time for gingerbread cookies baking but uh, for next Christmas maybe you can try it and um, uh, what else oh, I did it I did it uh, I can't I can't read my own handwriting currently but Oh, I know, I, um, in the last episode, one, one of the last episodes, I shared some footage from our walks and there were trees and they had this like white coating on them and some of you asked why. As far as I know, it's some protective coating and it protects the trees from, from insects, bugs, especially from ants, I think, so that young trees won't be somehow affected by them and they can grow, as far as I know. Okay. Another question was if I ever lived in an English speaking country and if so, how long can I wear? So I haven't actually lived there, but I spent like when I was like, I think 15 and then 17, I spent one week each year one week in England, one in once in um, uh, Eastbourne and the second time uh, it was Turkey. And it was so nice. <laughs> I I um I I often think about it. Um, I really love it. It was just one week, but I really loved it. And we went to school. And we lived in families. Yeah, it was really nice. And actually, the first time I was there, it was the Eastburn, uh, Eastburn week, and we. I lived uh, with uh, an older lady and uh, she has 
<laughs> she has a Rottweiler, a very big dog, and she was like, shush, shush, smelly dog, smelly dog, because the, the dog, she, she was farting all the time. <laughs> so that's how I learned to say shush. And I actually, since then, I've been saying it when I don't like something. It's not like Czech language type of, you know, you have different, what is it called? When you just have, it's not a word, but just, mm hmm, shush, mm hmm, oh yeah, and so on. So this type of word. <laughs> and we don't have shush, but I do use it. So I, mean, I like it so much. And the Turkey, it's a really lovely, like, fishing town. Um, yeah, so. But it was like that. And uh, I, when I was at university, I got scholarship and it was 2016. And I spent one summer in Cologne, in Germany. And that's an English speaking country, but I studied German studies. So I did, I got a scholarship and I studied the summer. For one summer, I studied in Cologne. That was so great as well. Okay. And that's it. Another question was why I started knitting or something like that. What was the impulse for it? Uh, so I already talked about it in the first episode, I think. And uh, my mm, grandmother taught me uh, when I was about like, uh, ten years old. Taught me how to crochet, and I crochet. I wanted to just, mm, learn how to knit as well, but I don't know. I found it too boring to. Uh, too difficult and that in 2020 yeah it was one and a half year ago uh, I started knitting like for real and why because I always been looking on the patterns and you know on Pinterest and I was always so with the beautiful sweaters and uh, the garments I was like oh my god it's not a crochet pattern it's a knit, like, knitting pattern and like uh, <laughs> you can't do as many things uh, with crochet hook as with needles in my experience and it doesn't look as nice so that was the impulse I really wanted to be able to make such nice things and game changer was also quality yarn and quality equipment so I made my first uh, purchase um, at Tony and Sister Air Shop and it's the whole knitting era began <laughs> like then and I also took some footage while we were uh, we went for a walk uh, after Christmas and also in some time in January so if you want to you can just um, keep watching and see some other parts of the place where I live uh, the, we, it's not in Oslavan in my town it's actually the first Recording is from Tetschice, it's a village nearby, and the other from Zbisho, that's a town next to Oslava, Um Yeah, so that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I'm always so, yeah, just don't mind me. <laughs> so, I wish you um, a nice weekend. Today it's Saturday. But I'm going to release this probably on Monday, so yeah, I wish you um, successful and happy and, you know, relaxing week. And uh, see you soon. Bye.